SpinPod 7.5 is a load orientation solution. So what that means is you'll have 360 degree control of the load under the spreader bar. You can actually see right now the wind is starting to pick up a little bit and it's uh, spinning the load. So I'm gonna go right with it to bring it back to the front side of the camera. Eliminating tag lines for a hands-free lifting operation. This is the Everest Spin Pod. How can moving your load control to a remote controlled load management system make your lift safer? Let's take a look at the Ever Spin Pod 7.5. My name is Tyler Krause. I work for the Crosby Group. I'm the service and support manager for our technology solutions division. This behind me is the Verton SpinPod 7.5. It is a load orientation solution. It provides elimination of tag lines and pulls people away from a load. So the, the primary goal is safety and safety minded. So getting people away from a load into these pinch points and managing, managing risks. You could use this in any lifting application that you have a spreader bar. So the 7.5 could be adapted to, you know, a spreader bar you have in the field or to a newer spreader bar for a specific application. But if you could think of the application, it could be done and tied to that spreader bar. So the technology inside the SpinPod 7.5 is gyroscopic technology. There are two flywheels inside that spin at 1500, 2500, and 3000 RPMs. And that gives you your rotational force and torque on the uh, spreader bar. You can absolutely use your own lifting beam. You know, as you see here, this is just a standard spreader beam and we fitted these horseshoe attachments legs down to the four anchor points of the spin pod. I'm gonna turn it real quick and you can see the other side. So there's four anchors, one on each corner of the spin pod 7.5. With the remote control, you get about 200 meters, which is equal to about 650 feet of line of sight control. So whether you're 600 feet away on the ground looking up at it or right next to it, you have control with the remote. Along with that, there's also a pitch and catch feature with the remote control system. So if you're about to lose that line of sight, which is critical for operation, you have another rigger or operator at the top of structure or somewhere that's in that blind pick area to be able to cast to operate independently with two remotes. These units come with a feature for a quick swap on the battery pack see the battery on the left hand side here. Uh, you'll get eight hours of operation, steady operation at 1500 RPMs, but say you're running it all day, maybe even multiple shifts and you needed to have a secondary battery pack. You can get a second battery pack to be able to have that charge off the side and do a quick swap, swap the new battery on and continue your operation. So they can control upwards of uh, 25 tons. This assembly right here is roughly uh, 3,800 pounds. So adding that into your pick plan, knowing how much weight you have below your hook and how much load you're picking up, uh, all is incorporated into your pick plan and design. If your load's getting upwards of 25 tons, this unit is modular, which means you can add multiple units to your spreader bar. So imagine you had your spreader bar, you created a T-beam across the top, you can attach two of the 7.5s up to six of these units. There is a larger unit, the SpinPod 30, which has four times the capacity of the 7.5, mitigating have to do that modular configuration. But depending on your application, it might make more sense to have the multiple 7.5s. But when you, when you think about that, you really need to consider the size of the load that you have. Consider that as a factor when you're scaling and uh, picking the units that you're gonna use. There's three primary functions, left, right, and hold. When you wanna go left, you look at it from a, a top view, it's counterclockwise. So I'm gonna go left with it right now. And the unit rotates at a max speed of four degrees per second. And we'll bring it back right. Right is clockwise. And then the final function, when you wanna get it to a certain heading, you can hit hold and it'll hold it at that heading. Because wind factors, the 
uh, unit is also GPS coordinated. So to get it to a certain coordinate, you can stop it right in that heading. From there, you can also do minute adjustments to the degree left and right to get it into that position if your bolt placements or anything like that. So we're going to cable up. So what we're going to do is we're going to swing right and the system is in, a, in the hold function right now. And what you'll notice is the unit's going to maintain this heading all throughout the swing of the crane. So typically when you're singing, the, the unit will kind of follow the path of the crane. So it typically be rotating right right now where it's holding that heading. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate the, the unit while it's uh, while it's on. I'm going to put it to 90 degrees and we're going to bring it back. I'm going to hold it right there. And I'm going to spin it back so it's facing us. Back into hold. So right now it's in the hold function. I'm just going to grab a hold of uh, one of these uh, chain slings. See if I can't just pull it towards myself. See if I can't get it to rotate around. So right now it's counteracting my body weight. I can see the gimbal angles calling for more torque to pull myself back towards it. Say you're trying to fly a, a large exterior metal panel into place. You can use this unit, rig it up to your spreader bar, pick up the panel, fly it in and there's the hold function where it'll actually hold it at a heading and bring you closer into the building phase. So you're not you know, moving it left and right quickly into spot. You can hold that a heading and bring it right into where you need it to be and avoiding people getting into those tight, tight areas. Or if you're tracking a tagline across the ground, you know, got rebar or whatever on site, you know, this basically mitigates all that risk and gets you to where you need to be with the load. We had a contractor that was raising and lowering these, these bins inside of a shaft constantly all day. And they're having an issue with the bins hitting the walls of, of the shaft. And so when they implemented the Verton solution onto their spreader bar, they were able to control the load inside the shaft and mitigate hitting and bumping uh, sidewalls while they're going up and down. So you can have multiple sling legs. Right now you can see this, there's a, a two line configuration, one on each side, a single leg on each side. You can have four legs if you have multiple corners you're trying to pick up from your spreader bar. What's important though, is you do need at least two legs coming down to your load. To have a single down the middle, you're not really getting your rotational control of the load beneath you. You can use the Z.5 to lift, you know, anything you can think of below the hook. Metal panels, concrete precast concrete structures, rebar bundles, steel beams, you know, anything you really want to have uh, complete control over and flying into a certain position. You know, working hand in hand with, with Crosby, Mozilla, and Verton, we're able to understand your, your lifting operation build the plan around what it needs to be to size these accordingly and fit them to your spreader bar. So if you wanted to get your hands on a 7.5, contacting with Crosby and Mozilla, and we'll hook you up with one.